Good morning, brothers and sisters. Good morning. Welcome to our Easter celebration. Now, today we celebrate Easter one week before the real uh, Easter date, uh, which is uh, supposed to be next week. But we are celebrating it first here, our prayer, with this uh, Easter uh, celebrations. And we welcome you all to come. You know, as we watch itong, uh, small uh, uh, short video clips that we have seen, you know, we could identify with some of those things that has been uh, that it happens in our lives, diba? Especially, okay, when we are having our yung motorcycle natin, eh, empty tank. Sometimes, eh, big lang na wala na, kulang na yung gasolina. And there are a lot of emptiness, empty things that we have experienced in life, okay? And the most uh, uh, pinaka grabbing uh, that we have experienced is when we feel emptiness inside in our heart, okay? Now, this is what uh, life is all about. Now, emptiness is always around us. But only the empty tomb will always give us something that is different from the emptiness that we have experienced in life. Okay. Now, we know one thing that uh, that is why we are celebrating Easter. Why? Easter is the resurrection of Jesus. We know that Jesus died. After three days, he rose again. And the place where he was buried is empty. And today, we come before the Lord to see what this empty tomb means to us. Okay. Then let's go back again to the Bible and see the first Easter na nangyari. Tignan natin, and then let us go and see what does this empty tomb that uh, we have seen okay, teach us or tell us something about God, about who we are, and about life in itself. Okay. So let's go back again to the Bible in Matthew 28, 1-10. to okay, Let's all read together itong passage na to from 1 to 10. Okay. After the Sabbath, a Sunday morning was dawning. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. Suddenly there was a violent earthquake. An angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled the stone away, and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid that they trembled and became like dead men. The angel spoke to the woman. You must not be afraid, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has been raised just as he said. Come here and see the place where he was lying. Go quickly now and tell his disciples he has been raised from the dead and now he is now going to Galilee ahead of you. There you will see him. Remember what I have told you. So they left the tomb in a hurry, afraid and yet filled with joy and ran to tell his disciple. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Peace be with you. They came up to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Do not be afraid, Jesus said to them. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. In this passage, speak about an early Sunday morning where Mary, saka yung ibang mga, another Mary, and some of the women went to see Jesus in the tomb. They know that it was buried uh, in the tomb, and they went there. And uh, when they were there, we know one thing that uh, before that, okay, it happens that uh, on Friday, Jesus was crucified. And after he was crucified, he died. Immediately, he was buried in a tomb. Na bakit? Because the next day would be their Sabbath. Na. For the Jewish people, the Sabbath rest, hindi pwede magtrabaho. And so before that, they have to bury Jesus before sundown because the Sabbath always start from Friday sundown until Saturday sundown. Yun ang Sabbath nila. Okay? And so after the Sabbath, it is where they would be able to prepare all of those barriers and a lot of things that they need to do. But during this Sabbath, hindi sila pwedeng magtrabaho. And so Jesus was buried. And then this uh, woman, they want to go and see Jesus, but they cannot. So they have to wait until the most possible time, which is Sunday morning. And so during Sunday morning, early in the morning, the Bible said that they went and they went to see the tomb where Jesus was buried. But when they arrived, they find out that the stone that has blocked yung, uh, yung tomb nila has been rolled away. And there was an angel sitting upon this, uh, this rock, this uh, rock, big oval rock. And so, when uh, they see it, okay, the angels told them, anong sinabi sa kanila? This is what he said to them. He said, in verse, he said, I know you are looking for Jesus and who was crucified. You know, they know, the angels know that this woman came 
to look at Jesus who had been crucified, who had died, and who had been buried in this place. And so they came to pay their respect. They came to see. And so the angel said, I know that you are looking for him who was crucified and who died and who was buried in this place. But in verse 6, he said, He is not here. He has been raised just as he said. Come here and see the place where he was lying. And so and when they went and go and see, they see one thing. They see the empty tomb. They see that in the tomb, walang tao doon. Wala nang yung bangkay ni Jesus and it was empty. You know, as we come here, we know that uh, Jesus had rose again and it leaves us an empty tomb. Now, what does this empty tomb like to tell us? What has God to say about this empty tomb to each one of us? Those who believe in us and who, those who doesn't believe in Him or those who doesn't know Him. Today, I want to share with you from here three things that God wants to speak to us through the empty tomb. Okay? And so let us go back again to this passage as we have uh, read a while ago. In this passage, in verse 5 to 7, balikan natin na. You know, one of the things that uh, Jesus had done, done is that, you know, the angel spoke to the woman. He said, you must not be afraid. He said, I know you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He's not here. He has been raised just as he said. Come here and see the place where he was lying. And so, the first thing that the antitome tell us is that Jesus is alive. Buhay si Jesus. You know, from uh, the passage that we have heard, that uh, the angels told them that, you know, Jesus who was crucified, who died, and who was buried here, wala na. He is not here. He has been raised just as he said. And so one of the things that we see from here is that, you know, the woman has been told that Jesus is alive again. Not only that Jesus is alive, the angel said, come here and see the place where he was lying. And so he, he pointed the place and he asked those women to come and see not only that these women heard that Jesus is alive, but they went and see an empty tomb and alam nila na wala na si Jesus sa loob ng tomb. And that means to say, He's alive. Not only that, uh, the angel said, and then they went and see. Okay, another thing that we see from the Bible in verse 7, sabi niya, Go quickly now and tell His disciples He had been raised from the dead and now He's going to Galilee ahead of you. There you will see Him. Remember what I have told you. And after that, Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Peace be with you. They came up to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Not only they had been told, not only they went and see, na totoong nangyari, but they experienced Jesus appearing to them. Jesus himself appeared to them to let them know that he is alive. And so the first thing that we learn from uh, the empty tomb is that Jesus, what? Jesus is alive. That Jesus is alive. Now, what is this alive means to us, for us? You know, Jesus, it proved when He lived, he, when He was resurrected, He proved that He is the Son of God. And at the same time, He proved that in Him is life. Sa Kanya yung buhay. So this is what He had been speaking about when before that He was with His disciples. He had been telling them that, you know, after sometimes He will be arrested, He will be judged, and He will be crucified. And He said, after three days, I'm going to rise again. And even when he was with uh, uh, brothers, okay, the, the family of Martha and Mary, this is what he said. Do you remember what he said when uh, Lazarus died and Jesus went there? This is what he said in uh, uh, John 11, 25 to 26. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me will live even though they died. And those who live and believe in me will never die. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. Sa Tagalog, ako ang muling pagkabuhay at ang buhay. He is the one who raised people up to death because He is the life. Sa Kanya yung buhay. And so that is why when He rose from the dead, the empty tomb told us one thing, that Jesus, He is God, and in Him is life. Sa Kanya yung buhay. And because in Him is life, today because of Him, we could have another life. We could have another chance and we could have a different life. Indeed, there would be emptiness sa buhay natin that would bring disappointment, heartache, anxiety, and everything else. But because Jesus is alive, no matter what we face in life, there would always be hope, there would always be something that is good because life belongs to Jesus. And that in Him, we could always find life. Remember what Jesus said? He said, I come that you might have life and might have it more abundantly. 
And so what Jesus is uh, uh, offering us is that life, not only an empty life, but a life that is characterized with abundantness or characterized with all that we need and all that would satisfy yung buhay natin. And so because Jesus is alive, that's why this life has been given to us so that when we face all those empty things in life, we could always overcome them. We could always find something, find a new life in it, and find strength to face our tomorrow. You know, uh, there was a person by the name of Martin Luther. Okay, for most of us, we know Martin Luther. He was the 16th, uh, during the 16th century, he was a monk. Okay, he was a priest and he was also a theologian, uh, a great Christian reformer. Okay, one of the most significant figures in uh, Christian history. Now, who helped birth the Reformation. Okay, alam natin yung Reformation, which would give rise to Protestantism. Okay, so this is uh, one of the uh, main okay, character okay, in the Reformer, and that is Martin Luther. Okay. But even though he was a great person, he was someone that God used greatly. But there was once where he experienced something that is great, and he spent three days in a black depression. Na depression ng tatlong araw. Why? Because over something that has gone wrong, people started to criticize him, something is not working, and so he became depressed for the whole three days, every day. He was frustrated, he doesn't have any life, he was worried, he was not happy, and you know, he was living very miserably. But on the third day, that morning when he woke up, he saw his young wife niya coming down from the stair na nakadamit ng black, nagluluksa. And so when uh, Luther saw him, he said, he said to, to young wife niya, sabi niya, sinong namatay? Who died? And the wife said, you know, God died already. And so Martin Luther, when he heard this, he was furious. And he said, why do you speak like this? Panung mamamatay ang Diyos? You know, Jesus died and he rose again. And he will never die because in him was life. Why did you say that yung uh, na, namatay na siya? And the wife said, you know, when I look at your life, when I look at you these three days, dito yung sinasabi mo sa akin eh, na patay na ang Diyos. Why? You know, with all the things that is happening to you, as if, you know, wala nang Diyos, wala nang makakatulong sa iyo, as if everything is hopeless and there is no more life. And that is why I think na patay na ang Diyos. But in reality, you know, God never dies. And so, Martin Luther realized one thing. Realized that in life, no matter how hard it is, no matter how many uh, struggle and problems that he experienced, you know, as long as God is alive, there is always hope, isn't it? La God is alive, life would always be something that is good. And so there was a song that uh, tell us about this concept, this truth about that when we Jesus, because he is alive, he give us hope and he give us uh, uh, not only the hope but directions. He give us something that is different. And the song, the title of the song says, Because He Lived. I believe some of us know this song, an old song, Because He Lived. And especially the chorus. Ano yung sabi ng chorus? Sabi niya, Because He Lives, I Can Face Tomorrow. And because He Lives, All Fear Is Gone. Because I Know He Holds the Future. And Life Is Worth the Living Just Because He Lives. These songs tell us one thing that is important. That because Jesus is alive, we don't need to fear about our tomorrow. You know, because He lives, we could always face, no matter how hard it is, no matter how much problems that comes our way. Because He lives, all fear will be gone. And because we know one thing, He holds the future. Because life is in Him. And life is worth living because He lives and He gives us something, meaningful life to live. My brothers, sisters, may God help us as we remember and celebrate Easter, the first thing that uh, the empty tomb tells us, special truth about it, is that Jesus is alive. And because He is alive, you and me, we could also live a different kinds of life. We could be alive in spite of all the problems, the difficulties, and the struggle we have in life because He is the one who holds our hands and He is the one who leads us and He is the one who gives us life, life that is prosperous life that is abundant. Now, the second thing that uh, the empty tomb tells us, not only he tells us that Jesus is alive, 
And that because He's alive, we could find another kind of new life. Second thing that the empty tomb told us is that Jesus is always available to us. Jesus is always available to us. Let's look at the passage in verse 7, 9, and 10. Let's all read together. The Bible said, Go quickly now and tell His disciples He has been raised from the dead, and now He is going to Galilee ahead of you. There you will see Him. Remember what I have told you. And so here it says, He, he told the, uh, the woman, He said, Go quickly and tell His disciples that He has rose from the dead. Na buhay na siya. And now He's going to Galilee ahead of you. Siya doon siya mapupunta. And there you will see Him. There you will see Him. Not only that, when they were going, and suddenly in verse 9 and 10, let's all read, sabi niya, Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Peace be with you. They came up to Him, took hold of His feet, and worshipped Him. Do not be afraid, Jesus said to them. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. Again, not only the angels told the woman to tell the disciples now, he is going to Galilee to see them. But Jesus appeared himself and told this woman, Sabi niya, go and tell my brothers. Not only he said to my disciples, but to my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. You know, when Jesus rose from the dead, he did not immediately go back to heaven and then iniwan na yung mga disciples niya. He did not go, but he made a, 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 an effort to meet with them. So he said that, I'm going to Galilee ahead of you and you will be able to see me. You come and you will be able to see me. Twice sabi niya, you will be able to see me. In spite of what the disciples had done. You know, when Jesus was arrested, okay, what did the disciples do? Anong ginawa ng mga disciple? Some of them ran away. Okay, to, uh, tumakas na. Some of them ano, denied Jesus three times, especially si, si Peter. And so all of them left Jesus and then left him alone in times na nangangailangan siya. And so if it is us, you know, after that, you know, hindi na natin ano, pakikialaman yung mga tao. But Jesus, no. Jesus, in spite of all of this, He considered them brothers. He considered them His disciples. And He made a way to make Himself available to His disciple. And that's why He told the woman to go and tell mga disciple na, okay, I will be going to Galilee, and there you are going to see me. You're going to meet me there and I will be available to you. Now, this is what he wants to do. That he will always make a way to be available. In fact, after he rose from the dead, you know how many days he, he lived or he stayed on earth before he went to heaven? He spent 40 days. Now, anong ginawa niya 40 days? He spent 40 days going, revealing himself to his disciples teaching them, encouraging them, telling them about the kingdom, giving them their promises, and helping them and encouraging, strengthening yung faith nila. Jesus is always doing this. And after 40 days, when He went back to heaven, He sent His Holy Spirit to deal, to live inside us, the disciples, so that He would always be present with them. Whenever where they are, whenever they call upon the name of the Lord, they will always find Jesus. And this is what it means for Jesus to be alive. He's not a dead God, but He's alive and He's present. Remember His name. He said he, when He was born, His name is called Emmanuel. No, God is with us. He is always with us. He is always near to us. He is always available for us. Kaya pag mayroon tayong problema, when we call on God, nagpray tayo, we call on His name, He would always be there and He hears us. And this is what the psalmist experience in Psalms. Okay, this is what he said. Psalms 34 verse 4. Let's read. He said, I asked the Lord for help and He answered me. He saved me from all that I feared. He said that when I asked the Lord for help, I called up to God. Tinawagan ko ang Diyos and He answered me. God always answered us. The Bible said that when we seek Him, we will find Him. Not only we find Him, He said He saved me from all that I feared. He is always beside us. He is always there to help us. Even when times that we don't want to come to the Lord, He takes the initiative to find us. He makes Himself available to every one of us. So that whenever we are in need, whenever we call on His name, He would always be there for us. Today I want to ask a brother to come and share with us yung life niya, how Jesus has been available to him and what Jesus has been doing in his life. May we call si Joey Maramba to come and share yung testimony niya. Now let's uh, welcome him, encourage him.
Hello. Good morning po sa ating lahat. Una po, ako, pinapasalamat ako po ang Diyos sa, sa uh, kabutihan niya sa aking buhay. Ako po pala si Joey Marambatubong Pangasinan. Bata pa lamang po ako ay namulat na po ako sa salita ng Diyos dahil po sa tinuturoan na po kaming makakapatid ng ate ko. Dahil uh, sigurado po akong tinanggap po na po ang Panginoong Yesus at dinadala na po kami sa church at sumasali na rin po sa children's camp. Ngunit po sa aking pagbibinata ay napalayo po ako sa Diyos na hinto na, sa pagpunta sa church dahil po sa pag-uusig at pag lang ng aming magulang sa aming bagong paniniwala dahil dito hindi na po ako na lumago o lumaling sa aking pananampalataya bagkus na muhay po ako sa makamundong bagay pagiinom, immoralidad, pagiging mahalay nanunod ng malaswa kasama ng aking mga kaibigan pagiging manuloko at paglalasing kung may problema o sawi sa pag-ibig ganun pong buhay meron ako dahil po sa impluensya ng barkada at kung saan saan ako nadadala ng masamang gawain Ang pagkakaalam ko ay normal lang po sa balalaki ang mga karanasang ito. Nasubukan ko na rin pong nakatikim ng droga makailang beses dahil sa impluensya ng barkada. Ang mga bagay na ito ay aking kinaliwan, minsan, ang alak at barkada ang naging takbuan ko ng problema. Hanggang sa dumating ang matinding pagsubok sa aming pamilya kung saan po ay niyanig po talaga ang buhay namin. Nagsimula po ito nang nadepress ang isa kong kapatid at dumating sa puntong naninigaw at, at minsan ay nagawa na po namin itali pagkat nakananakit na po. At dinala po sa Baguio Mental Hospital kung saan po gumawa ang kaparanan ng Diyos upang mapagamot siya doon. Sa panahon din yun, doon po ay pinuntahan kami ng pastors, pinanalangin at tinuruan kami patungkol sa kaligtasan na dala ng Panginoong Jesus. At sinurender po namin lahat sa Panginoon ang aming mga problema. At mula noon, patuloy po kami binibisita at i-encourage ng pastor. Doon po unti-unting naiintindihan at naramdaman ang pagmamahal at pagliligtas ng Panginoong Jesus sa aking buhay. Doon ko rin po naunawa at nalaman ang aking buhay ay puno po ng karumihan at kasalanan. Namuhay ako sa kahihiyan at lubos ako nalungkot sa aking sarili. At ako'y nagsisi sa mga iyon. Sa magulang ko po naman, tanda ko po ng aking mga magulang po ay unang pumipigil sa aking ati na Christian. Pero alam ko po na itong problemang ito ay ginamit po ng Diyos upang makikila, makakilala po ang aming, aming pamilya at tuluyan pong sumuko sa Panginoong Yesus. Tunay pong wala pong matigas sa Panginoong Hesus at wala pong imposible sa Panginoon. Pinago niya ang pananaw ng aking magulang at, tunu- at nung sila tumanggap, tinapon po nila lahat ng dibulto na meron po sa bahay hanggang sa panggang ngayon po ay nakita ko po ang, kanya- ang kapangyarihan ng Diyos sa kanilang buhay. Sa akin po, pagkatapos ko pong tanggapin ng Panginoong Hesus sa aking buhay, sa akin Sa panahong pagkakataon, sa aking karanasan ay hindi po naging madali ang pag-iwas sa dati kong gawain. Pinirit ko po ang aking sarili upang sumunod at maging kalugod-lugod sa ating Diyos. Ngunit maraming tukso ang akong naranasan at inilabanan. Sa tuwing nabibigo po, nabibigo ko po ang Panginoon sa aking pagkakasalan. Nararamdaman ko po sa aking puso ang guilt at parang may nangungusap po sa aking puso. Napakabigat po ng aking damdamin. At ako po'y nalulungkot sa tuwing nakagagawa ng pagkakamali. Ilang beses po akong natumba pero ang Panginoon ay hindi, hindi sumuko sa aking buhay. Ganun po kabuti ang Diyos para siyang ama para sa akin na laging gustong itama at tulungan ang isang anak. Nagpapasalamat po ako sa katapatan ng Diyos sa aking buhay. Dahil sa grasya niya, nakikita ko ang sarili ko na hindi nagaya ng dati. At hindi ko na hinahanap ang mga bagay na kinaaliwan masama, masasama sa akin. Sa aking pagpapatuloy sa Kanya, napagpasyan ko na isuko ang buong buhay ko sa Kanya. Lagi kong nararamdaman ang pagmamahal at pag-iingat niya sa akin. Biyaya at grasya at kapatawalan ang ginagawan niya sa mga totoong nagsisisi at nanunumbalik sa kanya. Sabi po sa 1 John 1.9, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our, our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Ngayon po, ito po ako nagpapatuloy at nangangako hanggang sa dulo ng aking hininga. Susunod po ako sa kanya bilang aking Panginoon. Ngayon po, halos na po kaming lahat ng magkakapatid ay Christian na po. Dati, dadalaw lang po. Ngayon po, ay nag-aaral na po, nag-aaral pa po ako kasama ng aking asawa, kapatid at ina sa pastoral ministry sa Dagupan. Dahil kahit po may trabaho, ay nagpapatuloy po tayo sa Panginoon. Nagkakayanin po natin para po sa Panginoon. Napakaraming pagkilos sa amin ng Panginoon, pati ng mga biyaya, hindi ko po akalain. Patuloy akong magtitiwala at namumuhay sa plano niya. Nagpapasalamat ako sa Panginoon sa isang pinakamagandang regalo niya sa buhay ko, ang aking asawang mabait at mapanalanginin sa kalakasan at kalusugan na binibigay niya sa akin patuloy sa pagtuturo, pagtuturo niya. Glory to God, nakapagpagawa na rin po ako ng sariling bahay, patuloy akong nakakatulong sa aming magulang, mga blessings na kahit di ko po deserve, ay patuloy niya binibigay sa akin. 
mga magulang ko po ay nagpapatuloy at nagtitiwala kahit anong problema. Alam po namin na kasama po namin lagi ang Panginoong Yesus kapayapaan sa puso ang kanyang dala. Yun po ang isang malaki na tutunan po namin sa buhay. Sabi po sa first sabi po sa John 16:33, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Isa po ito sa paborito kong verse at lagi kong pinanghahawakan. Salamat din po sa Panginoon pagkat binig, pagka binigyan niya po kami, ay binigyan niya, niya po kami ng family church dito sa Taiwan, Home of Christ. Sa laging nandyan para sa kami ay alagaan spiritually upang kami po ay lalong lumago sa aming pananampalataya. At salamat din po pagkat hinayaan niya kung mag-serve sa kanya, usher at cleaners po dito, dito sa church. Salamat din po sa lahat sa, panal, sa panalanginin, panalangin po natin sa bawat isa sa mga pastors, mga leaders. Salamat po sa walang sawang pututuro at paggabay. All praise, glory, and honor belongs to our God. Salamat po. Thank you. Amen. Okay. Thank you, Joey. You know, sa storya ng buhay niya, I believe all of us, one way or the other, we have done something na katulad niya. But one thing that we have seen that in spite of all na ginawa niya, there's one thing that never changes, yung pagmamahal ng Diyos sa kanya. Just like what the Bible said that nothing will separate us from the love of God. Walang makakahadlang sa ating, sa pagmamahal ng Diyos para sa atin. And that is why He came and He died for us because He loves us. He loves us. He hates yung sin na ginawa natin. But He loves itong tao na to. And that's why He came for us. And because of Him, He never give up on us and He continued to pursue us. He continued to make Himself available for us. Kaya nga sa buhay natin, no matter where we are or sa man kalagayan or that we find ourselves ano bang sitwasyon, we could always come to the Lord. We could always Uh, cry out to Him. We could always pray and God will always be available for us because He loves us. And so the empty tomb tell us the second thing. Not only that God is alive, okay, Jesus is alive, kaya nga we have this life bagong buhay. But Jesus is always available to you and to me so that we could always come to Him just as we are. Now the third thing that uh, the empty tomb tell us, not only that Jesus is alive, Jesus is always available to us. The third thing that we see from the empty tomb that the, the Bible tells us is that Jesus can bring us peace and joy. Peace and joy only comes from Jesus. Let us look at the passage in verse 4 and 5. Okay, let's all read together. Here it says, The guards were so afraid that they trembled and become like dead men. The angel spoke to the woman, You must not be afraid, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. Okay. And in verse 8 to 10, sabi niya, So they left the tomb in a hurry, afraid and yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Peace be with you. They came up to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. And in verse 10, Do not be afraid, Jesus said to them. Go and tell my brother to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. You know, in these verses, nakita natin three times, binanggit yung words afraid, isn't it? The guard is afraid because he had seen something that is supernatural. Nakita niya yung may earthquake, kaya natakot siya. For most of us, the same way. You know, sometimes we are afraid because of earthquake. Okay? And so, they are trembled because they become like dead men. Not only that the guards was afraid, in verse 5, sabi niya, when the angel spoke to the woman, he said, do not be afraid. Second time, not only the guard is afraid, the women are afraid. Ano naman tinatakutan ng mga tao, ng mga babae? One is, they are afraid what? Because they have seen an angel. You know, I don't know about you, if you see an angel, uh, would you be excited? You know, the first thing that would come is, nakakatakot. Okay, because of angels, alam mo. And so, I don't know if you have seen an angel or not. Uh, most of us don't see yung uh, nakita nila na shining with all those clothes, but they were terrified. And so, another thing that uh, they were afraid is not only about the angels, but they were afraid to be seen by the Romans or the religious leader. Alam natin that it is because of those religious leaders that Jesus was uh, betrayed and He was crucified, isn't it? And I believe that when Jesus was crucified, there was, they were looking for those followers of Jesus and they will be persecuting also those people. Maybe they will be, uh, uh, yung uh, mamimit nila is uh, uh, crisis or uh, unsafe sa buhay nila. And so they will be afraid going there. If someone would know them to see them, you know, they are, would be in danger. And so there are a lot of fear. But the angels told them, do not be afraid. 
Okay? And when he said, do not be afraid, when they left to go and tell his disciple, one thing that they experienced, sabi niya, when they left in a hurry, afraid and yet, ano, filled with joy. Even though there is fear, but there is a joy that comes into their lives. Not only that there is a joy, when Jesus appeared to them, ano sinabi ni Jesus? Jesus said to them, peace be with you. And again, he said in verse 10, do not be afraid. And so here is something that we see. Fear is always part of human. You and me, we always face fear every day, isn't it? Every day, we are afraid of something. We are afraid of unknown. We are afraid of yung mga problema natin. We are afraid of people. We are afraid of a lot, a lot of things. And every day, we fear this. this uh, we have a lot of things to fear. Not only because of fear. And because of fear, you know, there would be no peace sa buhay natin. But when Jesus rose from the dead, he came and he pronounced peace to those people. Not only that in the past he said, peace be with you, but when he appeared to his disciples, every time when he appeared, he would always greet them, bring upon them the peace, and bring upon them joy. And that is why, you know, peace and joy only comes from Jesus. A lot of times we try to find peace, we try to find joy, but, you know, in this world, we will never find it. It is only in Jesus that we will be able to find the peace and joy that we needed in life. Just like what Romans 15 verse 13 say. Let us all read together. Sabi niya, May God, the source of hope, fill you with all joy and peace by means of your faith in Him, so that your hope will continue to grow by the power of the Holy Spirit. May God, the source of hope, fill you with all joy and peace. The hope comes from the joy and the peace that Jesus gave. And it is the source, it comes from Jesus through our faith, through believing in Him, so that our hope will continue to grow by the power of the Holy Spirit. Whenever we come to the Lord in times of uh, unpeacefulness or in times of difficulties, we could always find joy the, uh, and peace. That is why Jesus said, you know, I give you peace, not like the world has given you. But the peace that I give surpasses all understanding. He surpasses everything that is happening, even the things that we don't understand. It surpasses, and there would always be peace na pupunta sa buhay natin. There was a missionary that had been uh, working for many, many years in a far country, okay, in a, uh, in a, in Portugal. He has been ministering for fifty years, and he he is a missionary from Great Britain. Now, often when he was in there uh, ministering, he would uh, encounter a lot of difficult situations sa lugar na yun. Okay. But during World War II, you know, the situation becomes so critical that some people advise him na, you know, why not you send yung family mo back to England so that they would be safe. Evacuate them so that they will be safe. Okay. They would be protected. And so he listened to them and he sent his wife and eight children okay, to England for safety. Okay. And not only that young uh, wife niya and eight children, but his sister together with her three, son, three daughters, uh, three uh, children also were evacuated on the same ship. And they went, on that day, they went and he left because there are some things that he need to do to finish the mission that, uh, that he need to do. And so when he went there, the next day is Sunday. And so Sunday came and he came to the pulpit and he started to preach. Now before he preached, he said, you know, I, before I came here, before I stand here, I uh, uh, received a word that tell me that my family, all my family members, they have arrived safely home. They have arrived safely home. And then he started to preach and then to lead the service until the end. And then there, he, uh, yung, yung words niya, and then uh, become a big blessing and encouragement to a lot of people. But after the service, that is where they find out, nalaman nila ano, na before he went to preach, he received that news. And that news said that, you know, there was a submarine, and he torpedoed yung ship, okay, that his wife and eight children, together with his sister and her three children, who was in there, and everyone in that place died. Namatay lahat. And in spite of that, you know, he had this peace to continue with yung service niya. He continued to have this peace and joy in preaching the good news. Why? Because he knows one thing. 
that his family, wife and children, his sister and, their, uh, and her children, they are all Christians. Alam nina lang right now, na although they died, but they are enjoying uh, uh, the, 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 the promise of heaven that God has promised. And they are there in heaven enjoying yung eternal life nila. And that's why in spite of all that had happened, you know, there is that joy and there is that peace in that moment. My brothers and sisters, you know, even us who are Christians, we all face different kinds of challenges, problems, difficulties that a lot of times would, uh, would stir up the fear that is in us. And that fear always what would help, uh, would uh, create yung, uh, uh, inside us, you know, no joy and no peace. But whenever we come to the Lord and ask from Him, there is always enough peace and joy that God is going to give to us. Peace is what I leave you, sinabi ni Jesus. It is my own peace that I give you. I do not give it as the world does. Do not be worried and upset and do not be afraid. Just like this missionary from Great Britain by the name of Eric Barker. In spite of what happened to yung family niya, but he had this peace, that this peace come from the God who brings upon him. And the same way, whenever we come to the Lord, there would always be peace that we would experience. And so here we see something about what the empty tomb brings upon us and what God is trying to say to us. Not only that Jesus died on the cross, He died for our sin so that our sin is forgiven. But every day as we live our lives, the empty tomb always reminds us that Jesus is alive. And because He is alive, we could also live. And there is a new life that is available for us. And we could always face anything in front of us because, you know, that life that God has given to us is a life of abundance and a, God, and a life of eternal. Second, the empty tomb tells us that Jesus is always available to us because He is alive and He is in us so that any time, any place, whenever we call upon Him, He would always be available. Nanjan siya na nanjan. He will hear our prayers. He will come and help us and He will be available for us. The empty tomb not only tells us He's alive and available, but the empty tomb always tells us that Jesus brings peace and joy because Jesus has overcome death. Jesus has overcome everything else so that he, because He is alive, He has given us right now young peace. He said that it is my own peace that I give. And so when we have the peace of Jesus in us, we would always experience joy. There would be peace, not only peace with God, but a peaceful life for Him in spite of all the difficulties and struggle that we go through, that we will not be afraid, but there will be peace inside us. May God help us. May God help us that as we celebrate Easter, we need always to remember the empty tomb. It speaks to us. It speaks about Jesus alive. It speaks about Jesus is available for us. And it speaks about the peace and joy that is available for us because Jesus is alive. Why not let's all come before the Lord right now? Let us come in prayer. You know, in life, we all go through different stages. Maybe from some of us, we experience hardship, doubt, difficulties, frustrations. And sometimes we feel the emptiness in our lives. But we thank God because God is alive. That is why we could always face our tomorrow. There is a song that said, Lord, you are always here with me. A song that tells us about when storms come, no matter what it is, God is always near to us. Why not let us use this song as we come before the Lord and to claim God's promise to us and to experience the presence of God in our lives. Lord, you are always here with me. When troubles come, I trust in you. For I know you will lead me
on it was Almighty God uh, Once again My solid rock My solid rock Almighty God I worship you Why not let us come before the Lord and pray right now He is alive and He's here right now Why not let us cry out to Him and say Lord I need your presence And let us bring whatever that we are experiencing right now Yung mga mahirap, yung mga problema natin Let's bring it to the Lord Because whenever we cry to Him He is there He is available to us And He will hear our prayers Let us all pray together right now But pray natin lahat Let's all pray together right now Hallelujah Lord we come to you Lord We thank you and we praise you Lord Oh shamanara Lord we believe that you are here Lord in our midst For you are available Lord In everything that we have right now Father as we bring to you Lord Whatever Lord is on our heart Lord the struggle that we have Lord the struggle in my relationship Lord The struggle Lord in my life I know Lord that I need you Lord I need your strength I need you Lord to help me To strengthen myself Lord I need you Lord to give me the hope Knowing Lord that it is the best Lord I come to you right now Lord I am praying Oh Shabbat Afanara Shiru Lord, as we come before you, Lord, this morning, knowing, Lord, that you are alive, you are my God, and in you, Lord, is life. Lord, you have seen how we struggle, Lord, in many, many ways. Alam mo yung mga problema namin ngayon, Lord, and that we are helpless and we are hopeless, Lord. But, Lord, we come to you because you are available, as you have seen. Lord, you are alive and you are near to us. And that's why this morning, we just want, Lord, to come to you. Not only we want your presence, Lord, but we want to ask from you the peace and joy, Lord, that we needed in life, in our situation right now. My brothers, sisters, Jesus is alive. He's here among us. And He is the one who could give us the peace and joy that we needed right now. As we face our struggle in our families, in our work, in our health, financially in every way there is always peace and joy that is available to us and so I just want to take this time to pray for some of us who need a peace and joy that comes from God would you please raise up your hand just want to pray for you and ask the Lord to give you a new peace and joy this morning yes I've seen your hands you could put them down yes I've seen your hands yes I've seen your hands Yes, I've seen your hands. You could put them down. Anyone else? You said, Lord, I need your peace right now. As I go through these difficulties, Lord, I don't know what to do. But Lord, your peace surpasses all understanding. And I needed that, Lord. Anyone? You said, Lord, I need your peace. You raise up your hands. We just want to take this right now, this opportunity to pray for you. 
what we want to pray for you is just to pronounce your peace you know the Bible tell us whatever you bind will be bind and whatever you release will be released what we are going to do this morning is to bind all those fear that's in you and we want to release a peace and joy sa buhay nyo. and I would like to ask all those leaders to come and help me and pray for all those who had raised up their hands now for us to know sino yung mga nag raise up their hands or whom we could pray I would like to ask those people Okay, those who are going, not going anywhere, you don't have any fear that you are experiencing peace and joy sa buhay nyo ngayon. We thank God for you. You could take your seat. And those who need to be prayed to receive peace and joy, would you please remain standing so that we will know kung sino yung papag-pray namin. And after we have prayed for them, you know, when we have prayed for you after that, then pwede ka nang umupo. So we just want to ask the leaders and even those who are sitting, Okay. okay, you could pray for the people that is beside you. Pag pray nyo sila. Pray for them that God will bring them peace and joy. Bind those fear na sa buhay nila. And release your work upon them right now. Release the work of God. Go and pray for them. No matter who prays for you, there is power in that prayer. Just like what God has promised you. He promised that there would always be a new strength. And that whatever we bind would be bind for us. And whatever we release will be released for us. Hallelujah, Lord. We come before the Lord. Now for some of us who are sitting, you just pray for those people that is funding. You pray for their needs. Bring them before the Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah.
indeed lord as we come to you you are my solid rock you are the almighty god and we worship you lord brothers sisters when jesus rose from the dead he proved one thing na yung sinasabi niya is all true he said that he is life he is the resurrection and that he is the bread of life and he said that believing in him you shall have eternal life today just want to take this opportunity for some of us to really experience what jesus has said and experience the eternal life that is found in him not only is him is life the life that we live in here but the life that is eternal comes from him also and those who wants to accept him will experience this eternal life and so as we close our eyes just want to ask is there among us you never hindi po managawa to you have never accepted or invited jesus into your life to become your savior you have never asked him and said lord i want to believe in you i want to invite you pumunta sa buhay ko to be my lord and my savior if you have not made this decision yet you know you are missing a lot because when jesus is in your heart wherever you go there you will experience your presence niya and it is important for us to invite him to be in us so that wherever we go he goes with us and so is there anyone among us that you said lord i want to invite you to be to come into my life to become my lord and savior so that i will experience you everywhere that i go this is your first time maybe some of us in the past you have made this decision but i just want to pray for those first time na tumanggap kay Jesus and asking him to come into your life would you please raise up your hands and i would just like to pray for you you said lord i want to ask you to come into my life right now to be my savior yes i've seen your hands anyone else yes i've seen your hands anyone else na sinabi mo na gusto ko nang tanggapin yes i've seen your hands anyone else you allow jesus to come and dwell in you so that you will be able to experience him eternally wherever you are he is always there because he is alive and he will live in you anyone else just want to pray for you so that you will experience a new life a life that god will give given you right now why not let us all raise our hands right now and let us pray pray after me lord jesus i know that you are alive and you are god and you give eternal life lord i come to you with all my sin and i thank you lord for dying for me at the cross today i want to accept you lord into my life inviting you to be my savior and to be my lord and from now on lord i belong to you and from now on I want to experience you the living God living inside me so that whenever I go there I would see you there I will hear from you and there I will experience you Lord and I thank you Lord Jesus fill me right now and come inside me right now in Jesus name I pray amen let's continue to pray father I pray right now Lord for those who have raised up their hands who is willing Lord to accept you in their hearts Lord when they allowed you to come into their lives they are allowing Lord the life that is eternal to enter into their life so that they will be able Lord to experience Lord your resurrections that you are alive living in them and that they will experience you Lord in any places that they go they will hear from you Lord and they will know that you are there because they belong to you Father I pray that you will seal Lord the faith that they have and that you will continue lord to strengthen them and that lord they will rise up lord to experience the abundant life that you have offered lord to each one of us and we thank you lord we praise you sealed lord the faith that they have lord this morning and as we stand before you lord may you help each one of us even for us who are believers that we will always be reminded lord of the empty tomb that you are alive that you are available lord and that there is peace and joy in you we thank you we praise you lord and as we stand before you we just want lord that you bless each one of us 
May the grace of our Lord Jesus and the love of the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be upon us until the day that Christ would come back and bring us into His glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, before you sit down, tell the person beside you, God is with you. Okay, so this is it. You know, He is alive and He lives in us. May God bless us. Now, we just want to help some of us to understand and to know what it means to believe and to accept the Lord Jesus. And that's why after the service, we just want to ask those who had raised their hands, who had uh, accepted or invited Jesus into their lives the first time. We have something that we want to give to you that would help you, not only alam mo, narinig mo, but we want to help you to experience God as we like to explain and then I'd like to pray for you. Okay? So after the service, we would like to ask those who have raised up their hands, who have accepted the Lord to come forward. Now if kanina, uh, hindi ka nagtaas ng kamay, it doesn't matter. But if this is the first time that you are willing to allow Jesus to come into your life, you just come forward also. And we would like to, uh, to give you something to help you grow and to pray for you and at the same time to help you experience your new walk in Christ. Okay? So, do not be afraid. Do not be ashamed. You know, it's just something that is you. Sayo yan. For you to experience more of God okay, as we come before Him this morning. Okay, may God bless you. Okay, so this is the um, end of our worship service. And I hope that God has spoken to each and every one of us regardless if we have accepted him for the first time okay so uh, a few reminders before we end okay so after this we invite you to stay for lunch okay so alam natin na uh, yung pandemic is uh, getting alive again so ilang ano lang let us take precautions okay so when we get up uh, yung mask natin always on our covers our nose and mouth okay except when we are eating so when we go there the food will be delivered to you correct okay so wala nang pila pila hindi na buffet okay so kung kulang yung pagkain just raise your hand okay catch the attention <laughs> nakakahiya no okay so mga leaders you go around and ask kung kulang ang hindi <laughs> okay and then it will be given to you okay and then Ah, uh, kung pwede lang huwag sa labas kumain. Okay, do not uh, exit our glass doors para hindi matakot yung mga kapitbahay natin. So we are allowed to come down here in the basement and eat. Okay, and then wash our hands. Okay, now for all those who are newcomers here, we invite you to come and join us every Sunday in this place from 9 in the morning. Okay, 9 in the morning, we are you are welcome to come and join us to worship the Lord together. And during the week, we also have our cell groups, Mas Malait na group, where you can interact, you can ask questions, you can share with each other kung may mga problema man kayo or you have something good to share about God. Okay, do we have two on Fridays? Sa 8.30 ng gabi and also one on Sundays. Okay, immediately after the worship service. So we have a few people here who have joined us for the first time. So when I call your name, can you please stand so that we can recognize you and then we can welcome you. Okay, so first see Michael. Michael O, oh, invited. Okay, invited by Alvin, no? Okay, welcome. Join us for the first time. Okay, and then we have Angel Chen. Okay, Angel Chen. Buti Angel, akala ko Angel din. Angel Chen, okay. And then finally, we have Dionisio. Dionisio Alfred, ba Alfred, tama. Okay, welcome. Invited by Jael. Okay, so uh, everyone, uh, remember all these people. And then uh, when we stand up and sing our welcome song, and after the song, let's uh, show our appreciation and our welcoming hearts toward these new people. Let's all stand up and sing our welcome song. Well, 
welcome to the family. We're glad that you have come to share your life with us. As we grow in love and may we always be to you what God would have us be. A family always there to be strong and to lean on. May we learn to love each other more with each new day. May words of love be on our lips in everything we say. May the Spirit melt our hearts and teach us how to pray. That we might be a true family. Well, Okay, reminder, yung mga ano, the first time those people who raised up their hands to come forward and come approach the uh, altar, please. 